an unspeakable tragedy that has left a community and a country asking, how could this happen again? Because these scenes are more than just shocking, they're also horribly familiar. The circumstances of Jo Cox's murder over five years ago are disturbingly similar. She was shot and stabbed after a constituency surgery. Her death cast a long shadow over her area and left a permanent mark in Parliament. Her sister, who replaced her as the MP for Batley and Spen, spoke out today. Totally shocked by what's happened to think that something so horrific could happen again to another MP, to another family. Um, and scared and frightened and, yeah, a real rollercoaster of emotions, to be honest. Paula Sheriff, former MP and friend of Joe Cox, experienced threatening behaviour herself when she was in Parliament. Personally, if I was still an MP, would I be doing a a face-to-face -face surgery in the near future? No, as a consequence of what's happened today, no, no, I wouldn't. So I would imagine, you know, that further measures are going to have to be put in place, and that's really sad. There were others as well. Labour MP Stephen Timms stabbed in 2010. He survived. Lord Jones attacked with a sword in 2000. He managed to escape. His aide, Andrew Pennington, died. Many others consider threats and intimidation to be an unpleasant but inescapable part of the job. Between 2016 and 2020, there were 678 crimes against MPs reported to police. And according to the Met, that number is rising. They deliberately make themselves accessible to the public. They knock on doors to speak to the public and have surgeries where people can come in with any problems uh, they have. Uh, we can't cower these sorts of uh, attacks we've got to realize uh, that literally uh, MPs are losing their lives. There are troubled people who do attacks like this. MPs aren't the only people who are attacked and I think we ought to try to keep a sense of perspective and try to say we will face this together, we won't panic, uh, we won't be ignore sensible advice but don't let it put us off our job. In a book written by Sir David Amos, he talked about these issues, saying it was a shame that meetings between the public and politicians had become more restricted because of these threats. That was published less than a year before his tragic death today. Well, joining us now is the Conservative MP John Whittingdale, whose constituency of Malden is further north here in Essex. John Whittingdale, thank you very much for coming on the programme and also sorry for your loss because... You were very close friends, Wendy. You've known him for years. What's your reaction to this terrible tragedy today? Well, it is a... I'm, I think all of us in Parliament will be devastated by this news. You're, you're right, I've known David for nearly 40 years, um, and he's been a colleague as an Essex MP for 30 years. Um, he was hugely well-liked right across Parliament. Um, he lived for his constituents, um, and... You know, he was always available for everybody and the, for that this should happen to him at a constituency surgery is obviously devastating and I think the shock will be widely felt and of course our thoughts go to his, um, our thoughts go to his uh, um, family at this time. I was looking at the list of legislation that he initiated and there's, there's quite an array there of issues um, driving instructors, uh, heating in homes, you know, energy poverty, and of course the protection of animals. And it, it seems to me that some of these issues he first heard about in these kind of constituency surgeries. I mean, he really was the quintessential MP, wasn't he? That's absolutely right. And I've absolutely no doubt that he took up causes because the people who were affected came to see him. It's, it's one of the strengths of our system that MPs do have this very direct link with their constituents and we're able to hear from them about how they're affected by changes in policy. And I think that's something which it is terribly important to preserve, uh, even though this terrible tragedy has happened and, and sadly it is not the first time. Um, but you know, the, the link between an MP and a cons their constituents is terribly important. And David was above all one of the you know, best constituency MPs. He was always available to anybody who he represented and who wanted to see him. And do you think that that link between the MP and his constituencies is now under serious threat? Well, I mean, obviously, it's, we're going to have to learn whatever lessons there are from this. Um, and it's too soon to reach any conclusions. But I think 
many of us, I suspect, almost all MPs would be very reluctant to break that link. We may need to think about what precautions to take, what more can be done. Um, and that we've already been through that once after the tragic murder of Joe Cox. But the fact that MPs are available locally for any constituent to see is something which I would be extremely sad to see go. And indeed, I think we should try and resist if at all possible. What is the right balance then between keeping our democracy open but also keeping people like you secure? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, we need to be alert to the dangers. Uh, um, ironically, I had a meeting this morning with the chief superintendent for North Essex in which the subject of security came up. And the police, you know, are very good. Um, I tell them when I'm holding a surgery, but I don't have a policeman there every time. And I think it's unrealistic to think uh, that there should be. But as long as we do try and take sensible precautions, um, then I think that you know, we, we do need to continue to have this access which is available to any of the people who we represent. But it's too soon to reach any conclusions. The Speaker has said that he is going to conduct a review, which is obviously sensible, and we'll have to learn whatever lessons come out from that. So the kind of protection that we see in the United States, for instance, where members of Congress routinely have, you know, protection, I mean, you know, police protection, other protection, you don't see us going in that direction. I would be horrified if that were the outcome. Um, you know, the United States is very different. Congressmen represent, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. They don't have the direct linkage that we do. You know, every MP represents uh, a community which we live in and which we know well and which we feel a part of. And it's very important that that should be sustained. And so, you know, like every other MP, I, I do constituency surgeries, I advertise where I'm going to be, and I welcome any of my constituents who want to come and see me. Now, you know, obviously, you know, we have to have appointments perhaps. Uh, we need to be alert mm. to any threats or risks, but you know, the fundamental principle of the accessibility of MPs is something which I think is a great strength of our system. And, and finally, John Whittingdale, you know, he was a very close friend of yours. You were both political veterans together in the House of Commons. Finally and briefly, what is the one thing you would like him to be remembered by? Well, I mean, I think one of the things about David is that, you know, he, he championed many causes, as your report said, but at the end of the day, the thing which he cared about most was the people he represented in South End. And it, it almost became a joke that every question he ever asked in Parliament, he would always end it by uh, repeating his uh, plea that South End should become a city. But I mean, that was indicative of how strongly he felt uh, of his duty to represent mm. his constituents and his passion for them.